Welcome everyone to our webinar today on igniting early seedling vigor and growth in corn with Laurai Shine Diaz. Now I will turn it to Matt to start our presentation. Thank you, Adriana. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm the Field Solutions Manager based in Southern Minnesota. You'll also hear on this presentation from Chase. He's based in Devils Lake, North Dakota. Um, we're excited to show you what we have in store today for this product launch. So the meat and potatoes of the lineup. Maybe you don't know a little bit more or you want to know a little bit more about Lalaman. We're going to start there. We'll go very quickly into the modes of action for this exciting product. Basically how it's going to solve a problem for you and your crop. We'll talk about some trial data. That's Chase's area of expertise as my right hand managing US trials. And then we have an application video and we'll talk about a trial proposal. And it can be a way to at the end maybe take some notes. I know I've learned a lot putting that together for you on how to do good on farm trials. Uh, from a split planner perspective. So diving into the overview, Lalaman, we are uh, a good business to business basic manufacturer of microorganisms. So world leadership in yeast, bacteria, and fungi production, 100 years strong of family ownership and microbial production, uh, currently over 5,000 employees across the multiple business units listed. So how do we make this relevant for you in agriculture? Well, in terms of the whiskey distillery market, seven out of 10 bottles of wine as well, we have some pretty good ownership of that area. 50% of corn ethanol is produced with our yeast in the United States, and over 120 million piglets and sows are fed with our direct fed microbials. So very interesting that we're really touching a lot of aspects of the market. Uh, near me in Minnesota, there's specialty yeast cultures out of Hutchinson, yeast for flavoring soups and barbecue potato chips. Uh, behind the Mindac Sugar Beet Cooperative in Wapiton, North Dakota, there's Dakota Yeast. That's been owned by Lalaman recently, um, really producing a lot of baking yeast, which is a core of our business, et cetera. And since I've touched on sugar beets, if you're a sugar beet producer or you're benefited in any way by that industry, the number one consumption of Lalaman globally is sugar beet molasses as, as a substrate for fermentation. I was recently in one of our plants a couple of weeks ago that produces probiotics in Montreal, Canada, and had a chance to have the tour from the global uh, manager of all our probiotic plants. So if you go to CVS, you can get Lalamon Package Probiotics. And this gentleman um, was very kind to give us, give us a good tour of this pharmaceutical grade plant, completely organized. I asked him if he wanted to sample you know, some of my microflora for probiotics and, you know, being a, a specimen from the Midwest and he politely declined. So just so you get that aspect that, you know, not to scare you, but Lalamond is, is all around you and the products we use every day. So Lalamond Plant Care, we have a very interesting line of products that help with fertility. So Lal Fix, uh, if you're interested, there'll be a form at the end where you can provide a request for contact. We have a great line of nitrogen fixing inoculants for legumes, uh, liquids, peats, and granules. So Lal Fix, it's a good name to remember, growing in market share, in market share across North America. Also Lal Rise products, they give us some type of nutritional benefit other than nitrogen. We'll talk about that today. Uh, we also have products that enhance growth and soil probiotics. And we have a lot of EPA registered uh, fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, uh, any type of pesticide under the protection bucket. So we really market specific products for specific modes of action that are going to solve a specific problem uh, for your grower. The Low Rise product line is any biofertilizer. So these are living organisms, typically spore based and soil active. I want to just touch on that because a spore is like a seed of these organisms and they're going to be bacterial in nature or mycorrhizal fungi. They're going to germinate with that seed and they're going to colonize the first roots of the plants, really help us with nutritional balance and water uptake, ultimately leading to a larger and more active root system. And so our modes of action, if we introduce Lauri Shine, it's going to be a very easy to use in trial planter box treatment. Can be used across many crops uh, at a range of a quarter to a full ounce per 100 pounds of seed treated. Today we'll be drilling down a little bit more on corn, but we'll also mention malting barley in a minute here. A 20 ounce packet is going to treat one bulk box between 2,000 to 2,500 pounds of corn. Uh, it's going to eliminate the necessity of telk. It can be dressed in again right on top of the seed in the CCS or other tank of the planter. 
Agronomic benefits. This is a strain we're very much used to. We have 30 years of experience working with this particular organism. It's a plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, as we just discussed. It's going to add early growth benefits that even picket fence stand is going to be enhanced with this product. We've so far seen an average yield response in corn that's quite favorable. Phosphate is really our focus we're going to drill on here. So why are we really focus on this as an aspect, for, especially for grain crops? Well, they're very phos limited from emergence um, through the early root and leaf stage. In a total acre basis, there's thousands of units of phos if you did a total phos analysis, but only about one unit an acre is available. So that's our problem we want to solve. We want to make a root system that's going to access these available inorganic mineral phos uh, ions that are going to be able to be taken into the plant. So overall, as I just described, the proportions of phosphorus are typically organic or mineral bound, and there's just this little bit that's in the reachable soil solution. We really want to enhance that availability to the plant. So we're, complementar we're complementing the grower's existing fertility plan and all of his agronomic performance. So moving into what the plant is going to be benefited from Lowry Shine. So if we solve the problem of early FOSS uptake with two modes of action that we'll talk to in a second, um, we're going to increase FOSS uptake by up to 25% because there's just so much more availability right around the rhizosphere, which is the skin of the root where this shine technology is going to grow and colonize. As we see the growth of that root system, we'll see 42% more biomass and 20% more lateral growth, really just prospecting and absorbing as much phosphorus as possible. And I'm gonna wrap this up here in a minute. Um, this is our proof of concept. Around organic phosphates, we have a screening plate in the lower left. These bacteria, three colonies that would be in shine are shown here as phosphatase plates. So they're producing this enzyme that's gonna help get organic matter out of your soil OM, manure applications, Last year's uh, plant, last year's crop residue, and then on the right side, you've seen the transformation on a plate that looks at a pH titer indicator. So acidifying the area around the the root will help us take some phos away from calcium at that high pH or iron at that low pH. Really harmonize that pH of around six to seven, where we know we have maximum phosphorus availability of mineral phosphates. So just to recap, we're going to talk about how this is the perfect product for you to trial in your system this year, top dressing on to seed as a direct application. And I'm going to leave it to Chase to talk about some of our early field trial results. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, again, my name is Chase, field solution specialist for Lollamon Plant Care, located in the Devil's Lake, North Dakota area. And I get to talk to you about our trialing program or how Lal Rise Shine has performed in the field the past couple seasons and uh, what you can expect to see this spring. So first off, I want to highlight that although th this is a new product, an exciting launch for us from a physical standpoint, uh, the active ingredient or the, the beneficial microbe of Bacillus velazensis has been in our program for, for quite some time. And to start focusing on corn, I broke down or created this table of how our product or Law Rise Shine has performed in a field setting from the past two seasons where we've looked at it. So when you look at the compiled results, we're North Dakota, upper Midwest, as far south, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Ohio, into the I states, which is a big focus for us going into the spring. Um, so good geographical representation. And when we look at this, these are both replicated plots, maybe with NDSU or contract research organizations or grower trials a composite 87% win rate across all trials from the previous two seasons when comparing a check or untreated and the application of wall rise shine. Furthermore, um, if you average the actual response out or the magnitude, 4.4 bushels is what we've seen. So very strong, consistent results. And it also is very much so worth noting uh, the same benefits hold true in other crops. In particular, actually a little bit longer of a history, small grains for us on barley and wheat, dry beans have had very substantial responses the past couple seasons as a seed treatment, along with chickpeas and sunflowers being our primary focus where, again, 
same consistent results. And so after we've looked at the top down view, I want to take two case studies um, from this past growing season of 2023. And the first one is going to come from Edgar, Montana. Edgar's just south of Billings. And what was interesting or cool about this trial is it was a split planter, but the grower reached out to our sales rep, Greg, out of Billings, you know, and he wanted to do some plantings because he thought he saw something there. And when we look here on the right, hopefully everyone can see my laser pointer. Um, the application of the corn treated with Law Rise Shine at bigger roots seemed like the stand was better. And ultimately what this grower decided to do was send these off for tissue analysis. And so, you know, these are the actual corn plants that he harvested. These are, this was more an exemplary photo of just one corn plant. When we go back over to the left here, what the analysis showed was with the application of Law Rise Shine, kind of across the board, whether we're thinking macro or micronutrients, there was a positive response in the uptake of this corn plant or these corn plants in this particular trial. So just a testament of increased nutrient availability, including phosphorus and other micros as well from the, the soil exploration benefits of Bacillus velazensis. Now, when it came time to harvest, grower was very happy, nine bushels um, when looking at the Law Rise Shine treated product. So great result. And then in a similar fashion to how we're gonna propose trials for this upcoming season, this was a grower in, Red River, in the Red River Valley where he split a field out um, one side of the planter with shine, one without, and he saw a 12 bushel advantage um, in his particular trial. So again, very encouraging stuff. And just as a single case study, uh, I did mention that we have maybe a little bit longer history on small grains. This was a barley trial in Laurel, Montana, again, just outside of Billings. This grower saw, let me look at the bottom here, increased rich structure, with the treated product in conjunction with a little bit later dig, roots were increased and ultimately a seven bushel response with the application of Shine DS. So on to our application video. And so the main goal of this was to demonstrate how well this product adheres to the seed in a very easy application process where we're just dumping and the, the simulation here was dumping onto a pro box, conveying it into another pro box to simulate you loading your shine onto your seed in your CCS tank, and then the fans hitting it and dispersing as it goes out to the rows of your planter. So. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Matt Farr, Field Solutions Manager for Lullman Plant Care. Today we're going to talk about shine. Not sunshine, not moonshine, but Lowry shine. I'm joined today by Chris. He's a corn grower in the Minnesota, Southern Minnesota area. And we're going to do some live demo of this product, which can be applied directly to corn seed. Thank you for joining and I hope you enjoy the demonstration. demonstration is designed to complement how we're going to apply this in the spring. So this is a demonstration of this is Chris on his planter. He's going to pour this into the corn that's already in his CCS tank. Now this is an application of Lowry Shine. As you've seen, we've run the corn and the product, Low Rise Shine, through a belt conveyor to simulate the mixing we get in the CCS tank and, and through the action of the fans. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see coverage all the way through uh, the tank, uh, our simulated planter tank, by using this large grain treer. So we're going to go ahead, get our sample, and again this will show us the top, the middle, and the bottom coverage with the Low Rise Shine. We're going to close that up. 
As we open up the grain trier, we're gonna get a look at coverage across the different depths. Go ahead, Chris, please. And what I'm seeing, at, uh, just looking at this right away, we have really good coverage. This corn looks well covered um, throughout the whole tank. Uh, so this would again validate that this product, uh, it's patent pending, uh, it's designed to get all this seed covered from an infield application. Um, and it's gonna give you good uh, coverage of the growth promoting bacteria. Um, it's gonna give you that early pop of growth. So to close this demonstration, uh, we're gonna show you guys the difference between some untreated corn that we took out before we, we put the shine in. And I got a sample of the treated. And this is gonna be a split planter trial going in the ground this year on a 200 acre field. We're looking really forward to the results. I wanna thank Chris again for his time today and his cooperation. Thank you. And coverage looks great. Looks like we should have a good trial. Awesome. So thank Chris. Farmer Chris said it really good at the end there. He was very impressed with the coverage as we were taking samples throughout the pro box. And just to revisit it a little bit, these are the actual samples of the corn from that day when we when we tra when we applied the Law Rise Shine. And hopefully you can see my laser pointer here. And so this was a sample taken prior. And then this sample on the right here was from the middle of the pro box. And when we zoom in a little bit, it's hard to tell. Don't want to play any light tricks on you, but um, when we zoom in, we can see coverage really across all kernels. Hopefully you can see my laser pointer. If we really focus in on this kernel, I think this is a good example. There's some really bright specks just with how the light is hitting it, you know, from our overhead light. But you can see even the smooth seed coat has just a base sparkle, uh, you know, across the entire kernel. When compared to everything else on the left, you can see that there's there's extensive coverage and it looks, it looks really good uh, just from that simple grain transfer step. And, Similar, same same process uh, earlier this fall that was conducted in North Dakota, just not accompanied with the video. Same procedural steps and uh, similar results where we're seeing the application or the, the adherence of shine to be really exemplary and getting all those corn kernels treated with just a simple in-field application. So with that, Matt, talk about this spring. Okay, let's bring it home with a plan for the field. I've chosen a demonstration field for us today that's gonna have uh, the correct aspect ratios. So this is a 40 acres. We have a quarter mile square piece of ground uh, in the family, it's called Dad's 40. And I've chosen to uh, use a 60 foot planter to plant this field for our Low Rise Shine demo. Uh, the sprayer will be 120 feet working with on the boom and the combine will be a 12 row uh, corn head 30 feet so again 60 feet planter on 30 inch rows that's a 24 row um, as we jump into planting uh, looking at how we're going to assign is the most important so i want to take a second here to say as we open up this field we're going to have hybrid a and hybrid a is your stable high yielding hybrid on your farm uh, that you might plant either early or late in tough ground or or your best ground uh, really we want to look for a, a wide range of, of options on this trial so we're going to open up the headland with uh, naming all rows under hybrid a hl in your software program and then we might even in a non-square field sort of choose which area we want to do the trial when we get to that area of the trial we're going to put the shine into the tank and we're gonna name rows one through 12 or whatever is the left half of your planner as hybrid A shine. And then we're gonna name the rest of the rows as hybrid A check. If we just get this piece right with our growers this year, we're gonna have a trial that's gonna be set up for success. Uh, pictures from the trial that you saw near Fargo, North Dakota last year, uh, the grower put his hybrid with the shine into his left CCS tank. And the same, of course, hybrid and lot number went into the right CCS tank. As you see on the far right picture, after a while traveling through the field, the corn had great coverage just from putting it on top of the bulk seed. So a little quick planting demonstration. I'm using the conventional way to open up a field, which would be counterclockwise. We have two trips of the 60 foot corn planter around the circumference of the field. And then we're turning in here in the lower left corner or southwest corner and we're gonna start planting. Um, 
the red strip would represent the rose with the shine treatment and the green would be the check. With our 120 foot sprayer, I just wanted to comment that, you know, after we do one lap around the headland, uh, we would turn in and we would straddle the first planter pass for the long rows of the field. Um, that's going to help make sure we don't have bias to make sure that those planter tracks are going to equally um, cover off uh, two sides of the treatments. For harvesting, uh, of course, this is how, how we would expect anyone doing a trial to set this up, whether it would be two hybrids or another treatment. Uh, definitely follow the manufacturer's calibrations. A lot of times they'll walk you through uh, that mass flow sensor getting calibrated at like a slow, medium, and fast ground speed. Really important to sort of challenge it with a range uh, of the different ground speed. And then, of course, use, use the truth of a scale from a grain cart or so forth. And then I always say stay right, turn left. That's just how we make lands when we're harvesting corn so we can unload off the left side of the combine while we're on the move. And then at the end, all we have to do is take a picture of the field summary that should break down the yields by the different uh, hybrids that we entered. So I've to keep the scale correct on this 40 acre parcel, I've sort of truncated this image to, to be more of a sandwich for us. So without getting into any uh, sacred cows, you know, I've, I've chosen the purple combine and the yellow combine and uh, purple and yellow might also uh, coincide with my favorite sports team that likes to break my heart every now and then. So the purple combine is going to open up its first land on the right side of a planter pass. That way, when we reach the end of the field, the purple combine can stay in the lead, turn left and finish its first treatment. The yellow combine following behind. At the end of the field, purple will wait for yellow to take the lead to so that it complete its side by side harvest of the next treatment planter pass, and then we'll complete that round. And then the purple combine will have to stay behind to finish this land and the yellow combine will then jump over. This is where it gets a little bit um, tricky where the yellow combine is going to want to open up a double side by side for itself. So it's actually going to stay on the red treatment uh, for the, this first round. Now the purple combine is going to come over, follow the yellow, and we're going to complete another round of the field. And we'll go ahead and let the purple combine jump in front at the end of the field this time. If we finish the farm out in this fashion, we're going to get an almost equal amount of side by side strips for our, our planter trial. So we're going to get nine for the purple combine and eight for the yellow combine. That's going to cut down on machine to machine variability. We're going to be able to do a great student t test or other statistical analysis on the data produced. So at the end of the uh, harvest, we're going to get a, a bushel summary of the different hybrids. We're going to take a picture. You'll have the contact number for sending that photo, and that's all it takes. So everybody's got their phone out. This is the best time of the year uh, when we're harvesting crop. You can let your junior operator, as pictured, kind of jump in the, in the control seat for a little bit and uh, take a picture of your, your summary of your, your trial. So this is bringing us to the end of the presentation. Start thinking of questions or pop those into the Q&A as you have them. Um, so this QR code pictured on the screen, it will be sent out by email as a follow up is your best way to indicate your interest um, and really register your shine trial this year. You can also take down Chase's number as a contact. I would save it as Chase and shine trial for easy searching later on and save save his phone. Um, as a thank you, uh, anyone that returns their yield data picture this year, um, good, bad or, or push will receive a personalized barbecue tool set. Um, and this would be more than just initials I've heard. We can do farm logos, uh, pictures, uh, LLC names, whatever would be best um, for, for your personalized barbecue tool set. So everyone participating will receive that. One lucky winner will receive a Traeger grill at random draw. I would also add that uh, you do not have to do a trial uh, on corn necessarily to participate. Uh, in, in, in the promotional there. Um, we're open to, to working with you on all crops. Um, so I think that brings Chase and I's initial presentation to an end. We're just so thrilled that everyone took time to join us today and is looking forward to learning more about Lullaman products. Thank you.
Yes, thanks, Chase and Matt. That was um, a very informative um, presentation. So uh, like Matt said, if you have any questions for them, um, you can type them into the Q&A panel. Uh, you'll see there's a little button on the top. It says Q&A with um, some speech bubbles. So we actually do have one that has come in and it says, is this bacillus the same as others in the market? So we don't typically talk about the strain, but we're registered with the National Collection of Industrial and Marine Bacteria, and we have rights to this particular strain of bacillus. So I also mentioned a little bit of the history. It was the first company that started Lolliman Plant Care and was acquired for our division, was using this strain to coat fertilizers. So it speaks a little bit to how hardy these spores are, uh, that we can use it as a dry treatment for even fertilizer prills. Um, and we've been working with the technology 30 years or better, um, and it is proprietary. How about on canola? Mm -hmm. So we, we do have a recommended rate on canola. Um, we are going to look this year at a few different coverages. Um, that's, that's definitely a, a crop of focus for us. We know that the FOSS needs on canola are pretty um, linear throughout the whole growth pattern. So we definitely want to, to look at that crop as a potential. Okay, and it says, um, can I just dump this into my planter hopper and go? Absolutely. That would be that would be the primary use for this product. Uh, having watched some growers uh, fill CCS tanks in the past, some like to layer in to their dry products like talc and graphite, um, but this product would be something that we could fill seed, and then we would put in our packet of Shine DS, and we would start planting. So on the talc and graphite um, train of thought, um, someone is asking, would this be a talc slash graphite replacement product? So we've dug into that question quite a bit, and we know we can replace the talc because the talc is primarily seed to seed lubricant and, and seed to disc lubricant. But we think of the graphite, it's such a good lubricant for the mechanical parts, anything that's that's turning and wearing in the seed unit that the graphite would be recommended to be kept as part of the program. So in that sense, if we're using 80-20 already, um, instead of finding a pure graphite product, let's continue to use both. Um, we'll get really good plantability um, and we can spread out the Shine DS even a little better if, if we're using it with the existing program. Okay, and um, people are asking, has this product been used? We have two of them, trials on wheat and then another one on the sugar beet market. Absolutely. So we've used the technology on sugar beets and wheat for many years. Um, we've seen a really consistent result with sugar beets as an inferral with the pop-up fertilizer. Uh, on the wheat side, we've seen a lot of consistent benefit with seed treatment. Um, so yes, we, we definitely have some positive responses there. And if they want to know more directly about those crops, I would suggest they get in contact through the form and we can provide that information. Okay, and um, our last question we'll take is how much per acre for a corn grower? So the ROI calculations were done that this should be no more than five to six dollars SRP to the corn grower um, at the top end. So that just gives us an idea of what we're looking at there. Of course, it'll depend a little bit upon seed size and seed per acre planting rate, but that all considered, it should be no more than five to six US dollars per acre. Hey, thank you. Okay, our time is up today for our webinar. So um, that wraps up our webinar today. Um, Chase, if you go to the next slide, there's um, some contact information as well. So if there's, you do have additional questions, feel free to re uh, reach out to Chase or Matt. Um, their email address and phone numbers are there. You can also call us tool free at our 1-888 number or email our general support email at support at .com. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time today to join us. Uh, soon you will receive an email with the recording of today's webinar and also a link to fill out our trial form if you are interested and in case you didn't get a chance to snap the QR code. So thank you everyone for joining us again and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.